welcome back to another exciting video here at Blue Glow Electronics. Today I was in the middle of making a much longer video on the build of an amplifier and um, I came to a perplexing problem and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a breakout video just specifically on this topic. It's probably a 10 or 15 minute video and uh, just cover how to test output transformers. Um, what I ran into is this amplifier is a 6BQ5, otherwise known as EL84, push-pull output um, amplifier. And it has some transformers here. I won't give away all the uh, goodies about this amplifier I'm building, but let's just say that these are uh, Z565 output transformers, which are some of the most highly rated uh, 6BQ5 push-pull output transformers ever made. Um, especially the ones here with the older cloth windings. These are kind of infamous for being uh, extremely well made, good uh, good laminates in them, good windings, and uh, a really good uh, ultralinear transformer. But what you run into here, as you can see, let me see if I can get something to point with here, but um, this right here is a blue and white wire, and this is a green and white striped wire, and boy is that hard to see. Uh, these, these things have just not aged well. They've changed colors, kind of yellowed and whatnot. And so, you know, I finally was able to figure out what these were just by studying them, and I hooked them up. And the blue and white here kind of goes to pin 7 of the 6BQ5, which is the plate. And the green and whites come over here um, to the screen, uh, which would be pin 9, connected through this 100-ohm resistor. Then all that was going well, and then I got ready to hook up this tube, and uh, I studied these wires long and hard to the best of my ability, and I cannot tell which one is blue and which one is green. And therein lies the problem of, hmm, which is which. So, from there I want to jump over to the schematic and uh, show you a little bit. And by the way, these are no better. Um, <laughs> I'm able to tell that this one here is the blue and white. Um, striped wire, this one, which tells me this is the green and white, but when you get over here to these pair, there's no way to tell which one's blue and which one's green, so uh, really tough to tell. The, the easy part is coming out of each, the, each one of these is the high voltage winding here, which is red. Um, that's, that's the easy part. Um, let's jump over to schematic and look at this thing a little bit. Okay, what we've got here is the, uh, you know, kind of the schematic of uh, the Z565 output transformer. And this is a very traditional um, design, push-pull, ultra-linear output transformer. Could be used in a lot of different types of amplifiers, push-pull amplifiers. But the, the theory I'm going to teach you today should apply to, to any output transformer, push-pull, single-ended, or whatnot. But... Let's start over here on the right hand side. These are your outputs or your secondary. And the black wire here is kind of your common. The yellow wire here is your 16 ohm tap. So that's the full length of the transformer. And if you kind of go halfway in between that and on this tap here, you get the 8 ohm orange output wire, which most people would use. Then if you shift over here to the left hand side, you'll notice that this is the input side of the transformer. And really, let's just start with the red wire in the middle kind of being our reference point. That is the B plus or high voltage gets fed into the output transformer via this red wire. And then from there, basically, you could look at it as kind of almost two transformers. If you go upwards here to the blue and white wire all the way to the end, um, that's, you can kind of look at that as uh, the transformer half that gets used when this top tube, V7, is active. And halfway in between that, there is a green and white wire, which is the ultralinear tap that feeds over to the screens of the output. Similarly, if you start here with the red and work your way downward to the blue, that blue wire feeds over to the plate here of um, tube number V8. Um, and halfway in between that is the green wire, which feeds over to, through this 100 ohm resistor into the screen. Again, another ultralinear tap. So logic would tell you here um, that if you start and hook an ohm meter to the red wire, and then you measured over here, measured the green and white wire, and measured the blue and white wire, with the red as being the reference point, 
that the blue and white wire would have more resistance to it than the green and white wire because there's more windings of the transformer between the red wire and the blue and white. Similarly, the other direction. If you hook the, uh, say, the black wire of your own meter to the red wire here, and then you hooked your um, red wire to the blue wire here, it would have more resistance than if you hooked the blue wire to the green wire here, uh, just because there's more windings um, on the transformer. Ultimately, then, you know, windings equals to additional wire, which equals to wire resistance, which equals to increased resistance as a whole. So I did that, and uh, let me take you back over here and show you my notes and uh, what I found and how interesting that is. Okay, here we go. So if you notice here, I've got the black lead of my ohmmeter hooked to the uh, red wire, and I have hooked the, uh, the red lead here up to, I just picked one of these two, these are paired together, and I clipped it on this one, and I got a reading over here, it'll come back uh, around 42.6 ohms when it finally lands out, about 42.5, 42.6, and then I kind of measured the next one that's paired with it, and guess what I got here? We got something more like 100 and... 67.6 or so. And what I did was I came over here and I, I wrote this stuff down. I wrote down blue 167.5 and green 42.5. And I, and I was able to tell which was the blue and which was the, the green because going back to the schematic we were looking at earlier, I knew which one had more windings. Um, so it made it real easy for me to then determine the one, the one with the higher resistance here, the one with 167 ohms, right? is the actual um, blue wire and then the uh, the one here with only 40 hmm, I think it'll end up around 42.5 or so 43 ohms here when I get it right any rate that uh, 42.5 if you notice over here 42.5 and that is the green wire because there's the it's the ultra linear tap it's between the red and this blue so then we were able to uh, kind of then come off the, the tap and come up here and connect to uh, what I know is the blue and white wire here check this out I'm getting 49.7 somewhere thereabouts and so I was able to determine that was the green and white at 49.4 ohms here. There it goes, 49.4. <laughs> it's bouncing around just a little bit. This is where it got interesting for me. When I measured this one, I actually ended up with, which this is the actually the, uh, the blue and white, I ended up with 318 ohms. Hey, that wasn't bad. I wrote it down over here, 318.1 ohms. And I knew that was more resistance than the 49.4, uh, so I knew that was the blue and white um, at that point. So, hey, all was good. Until I started testing the other side here, I got into a similar setup where I hooked to the red wire here. And then, uh, you know, I kind of hooked to various taps here. And let's see here. On this one, I'm going to end up with... Uh, 195, 194, somewhere in that kind of range, 193-ish kind of ohms, and I wrote that down over here, 193, and then I moved to the next one here, and I just kept moving along, and I'm not getting good connections here, because I'm not good left-handed is my problem, there we go. And let's see what we get. Oh, back down to the 49.1, 49.2 ohms. So I wrote that down here, 49, 49.0. <laughs> and I kept going. And um, what I ended up with noticing was that um, everything matched up really well. 168.2 on this one, the blue one, to 167.5. Um, green on this one, 42.5. Green on this one, 42.5. This uh, bottom one here, you know, green and white, 49. Over here, green and white, 49. This is where things went astray. Blue and white, 318 ohms, and the blue and white over here, 193 ohms. 
started blowing my mind. <laughs> um, I'm thinking, wow, I may have a bad trans output transformer here. But um, So then I thought, well, let's think about how we could go about this another way. Because what we're measuring right now are DC resistance values um, as they relate to this output transformer. Okay, let's try something slightly different. So, you've probably always heard, you know, that speakers, if you measure them with a, you know, an ohmmeter, you really aren't measuring the impedance of that speaker. Similarly, when you're measuring an output transformer with a DC voltage, um, which is what a uh, resistance meter supplies, um, you're really not getting a true um, inductive measurement. You're getting a DC resistance measurement, and these transformers don't don't operate um, with uh, they don't operate at all with uh, with DC voltage for the most part, uh, other than the plate voltage being applied through them. Um, they really operate as um, you know inductive type devices. So here's what I've done next. If you'll notice, I've got uh, roughly 5 volts AC that's what I'm feeding right now into these two green wires and you may wonder how did I get 5 volts AC well if you'll notice this comes over here and ties into a zip cord which ultimately comes over here and ends up tying into um, my kilowatt but since it's at 5 volts the kilowatt won't even light up uh, but feeding out of the kilowatt down here, I've got my variac turned way down right now to where it's basically applying me 5 volts of, uh, of AC. And so what I'm doing is I'm applying 5 volts to the output here at both the uh, common place here and all the way up here at the other, the 16 ohm tap. So 5 volts there should yield some higher voltage over here. If you remember the purpose of an output transformer is really to take these high voltages coming off the tubes and to drop them down to a much lower voltage that, uh, that would be safe to handle in your uh, as you're touching speaker wires or whatnot. And it kind of does a transformation, a uh, power transform at the same time here. But... Um, if you'll notice here, you know, measure, putting 5 volts in on the output will induce a higher voltage here on this side. And so what I've been doing then is I've basically been doing what I did before. I hooked one wire here to the red, which is the center tap. And then I've been coming over here and I've been hooking um, wires and reading voltages that come off. Um, like this 13.43 right now, 4.2. And so, I'm not going to drag you through, but if you'll notice, that one puts out 13.4 something. This one puts out 53 point something. If I come up here and measure, look at this, I'm back down to the 13.4 something. And if I measure the one that's been causing me all the grief all along, look at that, 53 point something. So, if I take a look at it now over here, um, what I've got done... So even though the resistance value was way off on this one compared to either this tap, this tap, or this tap, which should all theoretically be fairly similar, the voltages I'm getting uh, induced AC through the transformer are just about identical. Look at this, 13.42, 13.45, 53.4. 13.46, just about the same. Here's the 13.4. 53.4, just about the same. It is 53.4. 13.46, 13.45 over here. Then we've got 53.3 here and 53.3 here. So this transformer is acting perfectly, but the DC measurements resistance values would not have led us to believe that. Um, so just a uh, word to the wise, if you ever want to test, test output transformers, the same with a single-ended, you just wouldn't have had as many taps, um, instead of, you know, the single-ended would have only had half of this part, um, on one end here. So, um, you know, just a word to the wise there, don't always count on your DC resistance values. As transformers are wound on the inside, um, you know, it, might be different lengths going around the bobbin 
to get to the same um, outputs, but they don't measure when they're winding transformers. They don't use DC measurements, nor do they use length me measurements often. They're actually hooking these things up typically and testing them um, in some, some type of setup like we just did here that tells you that we have uh, we have pretty much a perfect transformer from an output standpoint at this point in time. Nice balance loads all the way across this thing just the way it should be. Okay, so hopefully you've learned two things today. One, that you can use a DC ohm meter to figure out which wires are which. If you remember as we went through this thing, you know, the blue wire had more resistance here than the green wire when measured from the center tap, just as it should here. If you'll notice the blue wire is further away from the center tap red wire than the green wire is. So I had 317.6 ohms here and I had 49.5 ohms there. It helped me determine which wire was green and which was blue. So one, we've learned how to identify transformer wires when you can't tell the colors any other way. And secondly, we've learned that uh, you cannot rely on DC, voltage, um, DC resistance values like we've been showing here to solely tell you if an output transformer is good or bad. Um, you really need to hook a AC voltage across it and let that AC get induced through the transformer windings out the other side of the transformer and then look for good matched outputs. Let's say this output here, instead of being 53.4, which look how close that matches up, 53.3, 53.4, 53.3, 53 53.4. Let's say if instead of 53.4, let's say it would have came out at, let's say, like 25 volts. Then I would have said, wow, that's causing a problem and we've got a bad output transformer. Because keep in mind, these push-pull, um, these are push-pull tubes here, so you've got half the amplifier firing on these then the other half the amplifier firing on these as the sine wave it gets fed in um, half of it's you know through a uh, splitter is fed into this set of windings the other half is sped into this set of windings similarly same things happening over here back and forth back and forth so these things have got to be nicely matched um, otherwise you end up with an irregular output uh, signal or a waveform on the output there that's not uh, symmetrical and not matched up well. But hopefully you learned something. We're going to wrap this one up. And uh, like I say, this is just an excerpt from a longer video series I'm making on the building of this amp. So if you watch this video, hold tight. The longer video will uh, be coming up here within a day or so. One last little final note. First off, uh, happy holidays to everybody out there um, watching. Second, the, uh, the video series I was making around, you know, kind of the instructional uh, tube amplifier 101 stuff, I'm going to get back to that at some point here in the New Year's. I just, I was getting really backlogged. I'd spend all day Sundays making those videos, and it got me really backlogged on my project work, uh, both for myself and for some customers. So I'm having to rotate in between. So I may do a month or two of, uh, you know, customer stuff, my stuff, and then swap back over to the um, you know, kind of project stuff, and then swap back over to the instructional stuff. And uh, so, don't think it's disappeared. It, it'll it'll be back. I just had to get some stuff out of the way that I'd been sitting on the bench for way too long. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, happy holidays, and uh, we'll see you again in the next video real soon.